If you have an old or spare NVMe drive lying around, check out this cheap enclosure to turn it into a fast, portable external USB drive. Hi, this is David of Tech for Baba, a channel I share my experiences on how technology enhances my time with kids and family as a dad. If this is your first time here, welcome. Please consider subscribing. In today's video, I'll share how this $22 enclosure can turn an M.2 NVMe or M.2 SATA drive into a fast external USB drive with similar or even faster transfer speed than the Samsung T7 or SanDisk Extreme V2, all without any tools. This enclosure is made by Illuton. I got it off Amazon and I'll put a link below in the description. The box got a bit smooshed in shipping, but everything looks okay inside. It comes with the enclosure, two cables, USB type A to type C and a USB type C to type C cable, a thermal pad to help with the heat dissipation, a thin strap for the drive, and finally a little spare lock to hold the drive in place. The enclosure is mostly just plastic, which was what I expected. It does have a nice chunk of aluminum heat sink in blue with fins on top to dissipate heat better. Not bad for $22. It's nice and small at almost 11 centimeters long by 3 centimeters wide and just a bit over 1 centimeters thick. Being mostly plastic, it's very light and portable. Here it is next to the Samsung T7 for reference. It's just half as wide, a bit longer and thicker. There's a hole here in the corner for the strap and the USB-C port is on the side. Hard to see now with the drive off, but there is an indicator light on the upper right corner here on the top. The enclosure is versatile in drives it can support. It supports both M.2 NVMe and SATA NGFF protocols, either the M key or the V plus M key, and in sizes of 2230, 2242, 2260, and 2280, up to a whopping four terabytes. Here I have the one terabyte M.2 NVMe drive I removed from an old Windows laptop. It's M key size 2280. It's very easy to put everything together. No tools required. Just flip the enclosure over and push on the back cover to slide it open. Once open, you can see the back of the PCB. Right there in the middle is the controller chip. There are four common controllers used in these enclosures. Jmicron JMS562, JMS583, AS Media ASM2362, and Realtek RTL9210. Jmicron and AS Media controllers are more common but Realtek RTL9210, the one in this enclosure, is the newer chip. It runs cooler and has been more reliable for me. So try to get an enclosure like this one with the Realtek controller if you can. The NVMe drive will be installed on the other side of the PCB, so take out the PCB from the end of the case. It just rests in these grooves so it comes right up. You can see the bottom side of the aluminum slab here in the back of the cover. Next, just install the drive into the socket on the PCB like any other motherboard. Lightly hold the other end down and hold it in place by turning this little plastic knob. The instruction says to paste the thermal pad on the SSD. I'm going to stick it to the aluminum slab under the cover instead, so I can reuse it when I swap out the drive. Okay, then flip the PCB over and put it back into the enclosure. Lastly, slide the back cover closed and that's it. This enclosure has a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port which supports 10 gigabit per second maximum throughput. It's compatible with both PC and Macs with up to 1000 megabytes per second transfer rate, similar to the Samsung T7 and the SanDisk Extreme V2. Let's see what speed I can get. Here I have it connected directly to my M1 MacBook Air. With Blackmagic speed test, I get about 850 megabytes per second write and 849 megabytes per second read, which is quite a bit faster than what I got with Samsung T7, which was about 651 megabytes per second write and 656 megabytes per second read. So this drive could be 30% faster in sequential write and read. By the way, even though the USB ports on the M1 Max are spec'd up to 10 gigabits per second, 
They're slower than those on the Intel Max for some reason. The workaround is to connect the drive through a Thunderbolt hub with 10 gigabit per second USB ports like the one I reviewed before. I'll put links to those videos here and in the description. Going through the hub, I get about 10% increase in transfer speed from this drive at around 910 megabytes per second write and 957 megabytes per second read, which again is quite a bit faster than the Samsung T7. I do wish the build quality of this enclosure is better, but it's certainly adequate. The drive warmed up quite a bit when I transferred a large 32GB file, but the SSD didn't throttle. For just $22, I'm impressed with this very affordable enclosure. Most of the NVMe drives today are more than fast enough to support the 1000MB per second transfer speed. Even if I don't have one lying around, I can get a 1TB drive for about $100 to $110. I'll put a couple of links in the description below. The drive and the enclosure together would only cost about $132. It's cheaper than the Samsung T7 and much faster. The T7 is built much better, but building my own with this enclosure gives me the flexibility to swap out the drive easily to increase capacity later down the road. And again, it's faster than the Samsung T7 and the Sabrent Rocket Nano. I'll put links to those reviews here and down below in the description, so you can check them out if you're interested. There are many USB enclosures out there about the same price. I look for ones with the Realtek controller inside. Some are more expensive with better build quality and perhaps better heat dissipation. Maybe I'll try one of those next. There are also Thunderbolt 3 enclosures available, which can take better advantage of the faster NVMe drive speed and MacBook's Thunderbolt 3 ports. However, most of them are not compatible with USB devices, so they're less universal. They're also more expensive. Having said that, I'm trying out this very fast Sabrent Thunderbolt 3 drive, which is also compatible with USB devices. Subscribe if you haven't, and turn on the bell to be notified when I post my thoughts on it. Thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful, please click the like button and share the video with others. Let me know in the comments below what external drives you've been using and like. If you want to see more videos on how technology can enhance our life with kids and family, please subscribe and turn on the bell to be notified when I put out my next video. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, cherish each moment.